Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to Manor Lords, shall we? Just chilling out, watching an oxen pull a log, and a man strut confidently beside it, knowing that he has to pull no heavy weight. At least for the moment. Alright, so let's see. Are people indeed working at our remote stone site? They are, but they look like they're returning home for the day. So what are we up to? Well, we're building our manor. We're trying to get that penciled in. And we're continuing to prepare for the winter. We are harvesting here. It is September. We've still got a little bit of field work to do. Now, we're going to get some wheat off of these fields. So it might be nice to have something to do with wheat. And in order to do that, we push C to go to construction. We go over to the farming tab, the sickle. And we would build a windmill. Now this converts grain into flour. And grain, this is a little bit, could be, tricked me at first, but basically you can see when you read the description of the farmhouse. Um, so they thresh the wheat into grain at the farmhouse. So once they get enough wheat, um, which you can see up here, they will actually be threshing it into grain. And then we can use the grain to turn it into flour and then bake bread. So the nice thing about this game, at least so far, is that um, it doesn't really take very much to produce these structures. Four timber is not prohibitive. I have 17 of it, in fact. And we can build a communal oven. And I like having the oven, you know, the windmill makes sense to have a little bit further out of town. Uh, but the oven, we want the fresh bread delivered promptly, right? So we can put this uh, closer into the middle of town if we like. Maybe something like that. Now they're not going to get to it just yet because they've got other construction jobs to get to. And you can see we have nine families and space for 12, but we're pushing for space for 15. So that's pretty good. It's going to speed this up a little bit. And right click out of this so I could see my full menu. You could see that we have so much food because we have a ton of berries, but we hardly have any meat and we have a little bit of bread. So, that's not tremendous. And yet, we don't have to worry too badly about things. Look at all that leather. Now, another thing you can watch out for is, once you have zero hides, you don't need a family working at the tannery anymore. Like, we have... We're not at a surplus of hides. So, what I can do then um, is take somebody off of the tannery. However, unfortunately, um, ooh, more bandits coming in. Goodness gracious. We don't really want to do that because even though they're not tanning, they are running the stall which provides clothing and it allows people to meet their clothing stall supply. So I think you have to have that there unless putting someone at the general storage, you know, will allow them to open up a stall with the, in, the goods inside, but I think you, even though they're not unfortunately doing any tanning, we need someone to do the stall work, so I will have to leave people there. Let's go ahead and just hold tab and see what we do have people doing. Um, we're replanting trees, that's fine. Cutting wood, yeah, we need that. Firewood. Firewood is tricky because we have a lot, but remember we use double in the winter, so we need to watch out for that. And how's it going down here? They are working 
and they are effectively harvesting, but we have 17 wheat in storage, so that was a pretty good yield. It doesn't, the number doesn't seem great, but as far as I remember it, at some point it doubles on the production line, so either the wheat getting threshed doubles the grain, or for each grain you get two bread or something like that, so it's going to mean more food than it, it feels like, but you definitely can't rely on this as your only food source right now for this village. Okay, so we're throwing in these houses. And our approval is 61. Um, it dropped just a little bit, but it's still very, very good. And all needs are met by that one. You can see nobody lives there, but um, all the needs are met. Alright, so it's October. So are you guys threshing it or what? Let's see. They have a 11 stored here. And a new family moved in. Great. Okay, so now we have 10 families. And we have two unassigned. I'm going to leave it that way for a bit. We have a bunch of construction projects brewing. I want to see how they do on threshing. There they go. They got one grain. So um, it is one to one here, it looks like. Oop. Settlement level increased. We're now a large village. So, um, by building more burgage plots, we've upgraded to a large village. And you could see that if we want to become a small town, we need to have seven level two burgage plots, which we have five already, but we also need level three. Now, I'm not in a super rush to do that at the moment, but we do have a development point we could spend. Now, of development points, I really have been enjoying this kind of hunter-gatherer um, tab. And if we go here, we get hides, but let's go ahead and get, um, you know, double meat. All right, so once it becomes too cold, the berry deposit will not only be exhausted, but will be pointless. Um, so we're going to move our families off of that task. We're also going to watch this. Once all the wheat is threshed into grain, then we could kick these people out of that job. Look at this. It's getting colder. You can see the smoke coming from the houses. It's awesome. So, for example, this Burgage plot level 2, they need tavern supply, they need a better church, and they need more um, clothing options. So, that would be like sheep, for example. Alright, how are we doing now? What are you guys building? They're building this. Um, I want them to prioritize the manor. So, I'm going to get this done, because I want the public order to rise. I don't want too much more crime to happen. We have a good amount of stone. Do we really need more planks? Or they already allocated those planks, right? By the way, I haven't mentioned this yet. We haven't done it yet. But if you want to have some fun, I'll slow it down. And up here in the upper right, you can see there's your portrait. There's an eyeball. If you click on this, you can visit your own city as the Lord. You're dressed up, you have a sweet cape on, and you can just kind of get a, a really close-up view of what's going on. Here's the marketplace with the vendor stalls. You can push shift to run. You can see this guy carrying planks over to the construction site. You can come check on all things. You can't really do anything. It's just a cool, like, visual experience of getting to visit and explore what your people are up to. There's our church in the rain. Here's all of our houses. I like doing this just every once in a while while people are building things. And she's like slammed these down over here. Here's the vegetable patch. Oh, we could take a bath in the tannery. 
Um, don't do that. And then there's the hunting lodge. Awesome. If you ever want to leave this, you just push escape and you go back to the normal view. All right. So, hopefully, they're actually working on this manor. And I'm going to go down here to this. And it's all threshed. So, we have 18 grain that's... It's all been processed. So now, I'm going to kind of take the family off of this job. And... We have three families... I'm going to throw a family on the granary. Get them storing goods properly. Make sure nothing's sitting out. And let's see how the berries are doing. They're still there. They're out there. Looking for planting spots, guiding an ox. I guess the forester might be able to just provide wood um, if... Well, they're helping the construction site, maybe? I don't know if it's like a, a tree that fell down naturally in the forest that they're getting. I'm not sure. Yep, so they stole 11 timber... And eight wheat. Good lord. See, this is kind of garbage, in my opinion. Like, I only have 10% crime, and that hit, like, that's way too much stuff for them. That's my entire harvest. Like, that, you know, they're still balancing stuff, but that's all of my wheat, basically. That was so much work um, to just have taken away, and there's nothing I can do about it. Lame. The only thing I could do about it is have 100% public order. But it, it shouldn't be... They shouldn't take that much stuff. Like, how are you going to... Like, if 11 grain is 50% of a harvest that represents a field side of, of this, which is one Morgan, like, where would... How would you smuggle out that much, that much grain? Like, those big bags. But we, that's why we need to get the manor bill. I don't know how much it will help, but goodness gracious... Again, though, this is why you have berries, like, because um, th we have food, so we can take that hit. Now, it also could buy very well... Um, be the case that that wasn't public order issue, that that was just an issue of the fact that there's like bandit camps over here and ba they will just occasionally rob you, which I get that, sort of, um, but I'd like a little bit more transparency on what that was and what specifically I'm able to do to combat it. We'll see if getting the administrative building helps um, and having some defenses in any way mitigates that. Alright, come on now, build the, the house. Let's see. All right, there's nothing stored here anymore. Okay, so the granary does have the rest of the grain and a bunch of food. So I'm actually going to kick out the family there. I just kind of wanted them to get the grain, and they did. And I'm going to have three families so I can get this uh, manor built faster. Other construction projects that we want right now. Well, I'm going to push C. I'm going to show you. We definitely are ready to start making some money. Um, we have a little bit of money, but not a ton. So how do we make money? Well, we go to trade, and we want to build a trading post. So I kind of want to build this, like, along the road. 
if possible. Um, okay. Actually, this is fine. And it doesn't impinge on the berry deposit or... Well, I don't think it impinges on the wild animals. Hmm. Sometimes you could see the radius of that. Anyway, hopefully not. So we're going to get a trading post. And what goes along with the trading post is we go to industry. And we want a dyeing workshop. So that we can start to turn all of our... Um, I'll put it right here. All of our berries into money. Because yes, we want it for food. But we have 130 of them. Which is saying we have 16 months supply of food. And because we have the um, development point put into double berry, we're going to get double berry again next year. All right. So the stone cutter camp storage is full, which means nobody's going there to get stone. Um, and we have 52 stone, which means beautiful. That's a great amount of stone. And so we're going to just kick this family off of that. So now we have stone saved up for a lot of things, and we don't need to do that labor at this point. So instead, what we're going to do is just let them continue. Um, I actually am going to put, uh, I'll put a family on the storehouse, and that will cause them to go kind of clean up the generic stuff temporarily. Just kind of managing them. All right, great. So we built the manor, which you can see right here, and we get a bunch of things happening. We have taxation, which we can talk about in a moment. Click on the taxes tab after selecting your manor to set levels of taxation. Taxes can boost your treasury and influence at the cost of making your population poorer. Yikes. So basically, it's like you can funnel your regional wealth into your personal pocket to increase your influence. Influence is what you use to buy territory. So like if I wanted this territory, I could claim it with king's favor or claim with influence. And it takes a thousand to claim right now. Um... So, you know, we could try to do that and get these bandits out of here. It's not a bad idea, but we'd really want a military to do that uh, if, if they're going to fight us back. Now, the other thing is, um, in addition, when you build the manor, uh, and it looks like that they finished the, yeah, they finished the tower over here. We get a retinue. What's a retinue? Um, well, uh, let's see if I can open the message log and new retinue assembled manor. If I push V, you'll see that I have this little retinue, which is like basically your servants that work at the manor, but they are your personal guard. So it's just like a little extra contingent of security to provide some defense for you. We have 19 spear militia with the people that have moved in because we have 12 families now. And um, we can't rally the spear militia, unfortunately, because it says recruits missing, but the retinue even though it says 5 of 12, they're like ready to go. So you can rally them if you need be. Now, we have this little guardhouse built. And if you want to build more, you can open the castle planner and get to this screen. The area, look at these birds in the air, that's awesome. That the manor is influencing or can build within are these kind of like yellow rings that are broadening out. And we could start adding modules like walls and gates or um, a garrison tower. This increases your maximum retinue size by 12, but you can only have one per region. Um, you could build a tax office and you could build an outer tower and it provides 10 garrison space. Garrison units and villagers shoot projectiles at approaching enemies, which is awesome. Although being perfectly honest with you, I have not figured out... Um, how to garrison units um now this is already there so hopefully um i don't need to do anything but 
what you want to do here if you're interested is build like let's say we want to build another outer tower because we have the stuff we could build this over here to just spread this out so that like let's say for example you wanted to build walls and gates well you can build walls and gates but they they can only be built within these yellow areas so if you wanted to try to like put your entire city into gates um you would need to have this area be much bigger now i don't know if the whole city can go in but i definitely want to put my storehouses in there so maybe we start to build some other buildings um the tax office i don't it doesn't do anything right now you see how it says it's cosmetic only but what it does do is it you can build it to increase the radius on your uh, manners buildable influence area so we could build another tower for example and just kind of like drop it over here um to gradually in increase our our space um you know it's not like the best but if i build this let's just say i built this like right here by the church you could see now this area is spreading out to here and eventually, if I build another one down here, start chaining these together, I will be able to wall in a good portion of the town, if I'm interested in doing that. Right now, I don't care about that, um, so I'm just going to say close and not do that. I don't want to use the supplies on that, but that's great. Okay, so now we have three families that are unassigned. Oh, other thing we want to talk about in the manor is the taxes panel. So I click on taxes. So you could do a land tax and it you don't have very many increments to do this but if you do it you could start funneling their wealth into your pocket for influence and um you will lose approval if you do this they don't like it you can also tithe so what you do here is you give food to the church and this allows you to gain influence from the church i don't know if it's from the larger you know church community in the area or whatever but you can tie the percentage of your food so like we could tie like you know just a little bit um i'm not going to do a huge number right here because i'm not super worried about my influence and i don't want to just siphon away my food once i get a really robust food engine going maybe we bump that up but i'm just going to put that up a little bit okay so now we've done this. Also, by the way, if we go to Manor and we go to People, you'll see that we have, like, these families here. But these families are servants, and they do not do labor. They're basically just, like, your, your retinue, um, and they just live here when they attend to the Lord's needs or whatever. So right now, they just kind of chill in that house. All right, I'm going to speed it up, and let's get some construction going. Let me look at the storehouse. Um, oh, so the storehouse people are actually running a market stall for, um, I guess they built another firewood stall, which is fine. I think then I'm going to just try to put people on the granary and see if they'll open up a stall too. I don't know if they will. I mean, I have two food stalls, right? I have the pantry stall and I have this stall, but maybe maybe we need another one. I don't know. Um, winter is approaching. So I'm going to let them keep picking the berries. All right. The communal oven is done. I'm just watching them build. I'm at full speed here, 16 speed, and they're building the dying workshop. Mercenary company is available. And um, we got a new family. So we have 13 families now. We did dip a little bit in approval because we don't have as much food variety, but that's okay. We're up to 11 wealth that we've collected, which is tremendous. And it's probably time to start upgrading some other Burgage plots, given the fact that we have more timber and that we want some more money. So let's just... Um, upgrade a couple more here but i do want to finish um these construction projects of the windmill the dyer's workshop is done which is amazing and we're going to immediately put people in this job they're building the trading post which we need 
Now this says um, excess goods need to be stored in a storehouse, um, which is fine. Like we know that there's excess goods over at the stone place. Um, if I click on this, you could see that they have too much st stored here. That's fine. Don't care. If we need stone, we can come get it there. And we're not worried about labor being halted because of that. So they're gathering all the stuff for the granary here. Um, they are hopefully getting berries and such. Trading post is being built. Windmill getting built. And let's see. I'm going to check out. Um, I have people making firewood. How are we doing? Yeah, we need to keep that going. So you could see that, by the way, our food storage is decreasing. Not because we're not picking berries, but because we have more families eating more food. So this is always why, in a game like this, you never want to, even though you see me just building all these burgage plots, you don't want to build more than you can sustain with your food, and you want to grow slowly to make sure that you can balance this out, because it's really hard to correct if you get too many families and you can't feed them. Okay, so I'm going to actually take the family off of the tannery. And I'm going to do this because if I look at this, we have no hides and we have 18 leather. And I do believe that, yeah, you see how the goods have been moved to the storehouse? I think this family will open up the stall to provide clothing. And we no longer need that family right there until we get a surplus of hides, which would be like when we can start hunting more readily. Well, there's two wild animals, so we might get some hides. few more animals came in that's great so they're making dye they've already made three but by the way another thing just to be aware of when you start making dye which looks awesome by the way your food supply will start to go down because you're using berries so you could either eat them or turn them into dye make sure you have enough if you're going to make dye but I feel really great okay and it happened by the way look at this the administrative buildings have put our public order back to 100 percent. so hopefully that reduces the random crime that we got all right we finished the windmill so what you can do now on the windmill is put a family here to basically process all of the flour or turn all of the uh grain that we have in to flour. Now, wait a minute. Do we not have any more grain? Now, they might have given it away. They might have distributed the grain at the food stall. Or did they... Well, I made some. I was going to say do this, but I don't think there's any... Now here's 10 grain. Maybe as soon as I put the family on, what happened is this grain has been claimed by the windmill. I'm hoping that's what the case is. That's why it's not showing any surplus grain. Don't be shy, good sirs and ladies. Yes, okay, great. Perfect. So they're transporting, this family is transporting the grain over here. What a cool game. You know, it's like they immediately were like, all right, we need all the grain. Let's go get it. Okay, great. The trading post is done. So that's a lot of our major construction projects. Now they're going to start upgrading all these places. Look, how much timber do I have? Good amount. All right. 
So I will um, upgrade that. The other thing we want to build is going to be in trade, and I'm going to build a livestock trading post. This doesn't take very much. And um, it will... Okay, great. You can see the, the ring right here. So this did definitely didn't cut into the wild animal area. And we'll put a livestock trading post um, down here. I don't want to uproot any trees. Great. So the livestock trading post we can't use right now because we don't have enough money. But what we're hoping for is to get enough wealth that we can buy um, some sheep or something. To get wool to provide other types of clothing for people. Um, they're upstairs. Not happy. Um, oh, disconnected from the King's Road. Now, I got this error before, and you could see that this is the King's Road. Um, so sometimes it's a little wonky. You know, like, you might have to kind of do that a few times to get it to say that it's connected, because it is connected. Um, all right. Great. Okay, so... Look at where we are. We now have 13 families here. We are producing dyes, which we can now sell at the trading post. In the next episode, we'll talk about buying and selling at the trading post. We're building a um, livestock trading post. We maxed out stone. We are processing. Um, we're making flour. You see, yeah, this is where you get double. So, like, the grain turns into double flour. And then we can take that flour and bake bread at our communal oven to provide more food and another type of food so that everyone has all of their, um, you know, variety of diet met. We got another development point. We're now a large village. We completed our manor. We have a retinue, and we're rocking and rolling. Everyone, I hope you're still finding this series to be useful and fun. Thank you so much for watching. I'll check you in the next one. Take care.